I want to give you an example of what can happen to generations and generations of children when fathers are not of God and in their home homes with them. Um, and this, this is, these are like young kids. If I had, um, they were six and seven years old, according to the report. This is from CBS Philadelphia. On the evening of March 24th, four little boys, probably ages, of, uh, ages six to seven, got on a public transportation train in Philadelphia. And you know that Philadelphia, for the most part, not all of Philly, is a hellhole. It really is. It's so, it's so, especially in the inner cities there, it's so evil in that area now due to the destruction of the family and lack of moral values. And it's interesting in that they call Philadelphia the city of brotherly love. <laughs> there is no love. There is no love. So these boys, six to seven, got on a public transportation train in Philadelphia. The aunt of two of them was with them. The boys were cursing, hitting, and at one point even spitting at passengers on this particular train. And it just showed, and you would have to know that the things that they were saying, you know, the cursing and spitting and hitting, it has to be happening at home first. Kids don't make up this kind of stuff, and they don't naturally become this way. It starts in the homes first. Uh, they hear their, their mothers and grandmothers, and if the fathers are around, their fathers doing it, and other family adult members cursing and carrying on. Kids learn by example, not what you say, but what you do. So whatever you do is what they'll be doing. It's, it's the same way that when we, turn, when we return to Christ, we start acting like him and speaking like him. We take on his ways because it's spirit to spirit. And whatever Christ says and whatever he does, we become like that when we truly turn back to him. And I have to tell you, these six to seven-year-old boys are not even as bad as things are going to get if we don't put fathers back into their proper place in life. Here's the first soundbite. This is from PIX11 News. Games of four foul, foul-mouthed boys, age six to seven, caught on camera, cursing, spinning, and even punching passengers on a Philadelphia train. Things on the subway, right? Yeah. Crying babies, check. Foul mouth teenagers, yeah, you've probably seen a little bit of that too. Sure. But a pack of marauding first graders spewing obscenities and throwing punches? The shocking mini mobs actions all caught on video and police want to find them. <laughs> These are the tiny terrors who went on a rampage aboard a Philly subway late last week. A group of six and seven year olds swearing, spitting, even punching one man in the groin. When you watch that video as a, as a parent and as a human being, um, you're alarmed for the well-being of those children. We've blurred the faces of the four boys and one girl who were apparently with an adult and bleeped every F-bomb and N-word spewed. Other parents aboard the train tried in vain to intervene, but it had no impact. One victim of the pint-sized mob recorded the knee-high attackers after they slapped a woman. He posted it to Facebook, hoping to get the kids help. Yeah, you know, certainly we have our share of, of criminal stuff, but I have never seen anything like that with children of that age. It's the feeling reflected by police who are hoping to find them and get their families the support they so desperately need. This isn't a case where at 6 o'clock in the morning when we identify them, we're going to be breaking down their door and dragging them out in little handcuffs. That's not the goal. The goal is to, to get them help. And you notice that if you're watching, you notice that those boys has no fear of authority, no fear of adults at all. 
It's not good for evil not to have fear. And they have no fear, folks. I, <clears throat> if they make it to adulthood, if they stay alive long enough, they're going to create terror in America and what, whatever neighborhood they live in. This is not good. And so we can be afraid to talk about failing parents if you want and blame it on racism, blame it on this and blame it on that. Even though I can't tell, these boys seem to be Puerto Ricans or something. I, I don't know if they're black or Puerto Rican or mixed because they have their face faces blocked off. You can't see their faces. A friend of the mother of these boys found the post, and now they are blaming the man who taped, who videoed the incident. So here's how it all turned out. A friend of the boy's mother found that post, showed the viral video to her. She did apologize. She said that they had been riding the train with her aunt after a visit. But the family also blamed the man shooting the video, saying he was egging the children on. Really? Regardless, late <laughs> last night, Philadelphia Transit Police tweeted out that they found the family and are putting them in touch with social services. Sounds which, like they're trying to make excuses for this. I, I am seeing a little bit of the, you know, the blame shifting, like, hey, we're really sorry, but wasn't I, really our fault. I, it just seems like, <laughs> look, again, and I don't like, you, know, you can't judge other parents per se, and I, I look, I don't oh, know what happened. Oh, we can happened. just a little <laughs> bit. Okay, we can just a little, a little bit. bit. But it just seems to me that, and again, I'm going through, my, my girl's six months old, so I, I'm not there yet, right? But if you're raising your kids <laughs> right at home, does it matter what's happening out there that they shouldn't be no. doing this? It just, if they're, if the, if the culture naive, at home is, I'm maybe, maybe say, I, I, I you do your best, you do your uh, best, and then they just are who they are. But that being said, <laughs> the woman is still an adult. She's in the care of these three children. Yeah. She should have reeled it in. She really should have. Yeah. Absolutely. Regardless. It got so out of hand yeah. for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Too long. But All right. Glad to see the right people are intervening now. And that's what we have in America today. We have uh, anger. Blame and victimhood. These parents are no good. They will not take responsibility for failing their children. You're looking at Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown all over again.